So I'm going to be talking today about uh, a framework that I've been working for the last two years or so. Uh, it's known as Kendo UI Core. And where's the micro uh, cameraman? You want the framework one or you want the framework two? Uh, either? OK, because I'm used to framework one. OK? So what is Kinder UI? So that may be the first question uh, that everybody will may be having. Like, you know, what, is, what exactly is Kinder UI? It's basically the most complete uh, jQuery-based uh, UI toolkit uh, that's available as of now. And not only that, it's with full Angular uh, support, OK? So in order to break it down, what exactly Kinder UI is all about, uh, these are the different parts that are available in Kinder UI. You have application tools or framework elements, as we call it. Any uh, framework that you take will have a backbone or will have its own framework element. So we do have framework elements in this. It also provides you web UI. When I say web UI, you can pretty much, uh, it allows you to have widgets or controls, out of the box controls that you can pretty much use it. You don't have to write it. Plus, it has a full mobile framework available as part of the uh, Kendo UI core framework. Uh, it lets you build hybrid mobile applications using HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. So you don't need to be an Objective-C guy or even c -sharp guy or even Java guy. You know a JavaScript, you can build a hybrid mobile application which can run on Android, iOS, Windows Phone, you name it. These are some of the widgets that are available as part of the web UI. Uh, you know, as you can see, pretty much most of the things that you need to build a web application or a website is available out of the box for free. This is Apache V2 licensing, uh, Kendo UI core. So you can pretty much take it for your personal hobby or even uh, commercial projects. Uh, as you can see, 24 of the you know, quite u frequently used uh, widgets is what uh, is available in this package. This is the complete mobile framework, uh, starting from your tab strips to action sheet to you name it. Everything that you need to build a hybrid mobile application is available as part of this particular framework. So what, you can, what can you build from the very simple Kendo window, as they call it, Kendo UI window? This is a window. It's like a pop-up. So you can build pretty much uh, a simple thing like this to a very complex thing like this. So this is a control called as list view as part of the Kendo UI web. So as you can see, it has a pager. The items are coming up. It has the pager gives you very nicely how many items and what you're seeing, everything. So it's pretty complex. So you can build things like this on for your web pages, but it's hardly five to six lines of code. And also, you can build mobile applications like this. So if you can see here, there's actually a mobile screen with so two, two screens inside, home and then about kind of stuff. This is the complete application framework. So I've been in the web uh, world for 14 years now. I started somewhere in 2001 uh, with uh, you know, .NET 1.1 is when it was there. But what excites me as, of, as part of Kendo UI is these framework elements. We have a component called as Kendo UI data source. Uh, pretty much everybody would be used to $.ajax and then you know, going out and then getting the data from the uh, you know, service. But what this does is it goes one level further and then does all the heavy lifting for you. You do not have to do even the dollar or ajax. Rather, just say, hey, Kendo data source, I have a read URL. So I have to read data. So here's the URL. This is where you will get the data. You go figure out how do you connect. OK, it's going to be giving you data in JSON. And that's all you have to set as part of the object. It will do the heavy lifting of invoking the service, get the JSON data, convert that into JSON array, give it to you as a JSON array. You don't have to do anything. Similarly, we provide, uh, as part of the Kendo UI core, single page application framework, the router, the view, the layout, everything is available as part of one single package. Globalization, templating, MEVM, FX, drag and drop, and not but the least, AngularJS, complete AngularJS uh, integration out of the box. So how do I use Kendo UI, right? So basically, I hope, how many of you know jQuery here? I'm not getting 100%. I assumed nobody writes JavaScript now. It's all jQuery. Or is it the other way? Like, no, no, I write JavaScript. OK, so if you know jQuery, what do you do? You say div id cal, and then in the JavaScript, you will say, hey, jQuery, give me that element who, who has an id called cal, right? No, you do the hash cal. Well, if you know that, you know Kendo UI. Div id cal, all you need to do to convert that div into Kendo widgets or Kendo controls is just say dot Kendo calendar or Kendo uh, whatever widgets that you want, date picker, palette, anything. So another way to create widgets, apart from that, whatever I showed you just now, that's the JavaScript way. That's the imperative way of doing things. 
So if you see here, dollar element dot kendo widget is called imperative initialization. But there's also another way to create widgets, right? We all know, so that's the imperative way of doing things, dot kendo widget. But we also support declarative initialization, you know, MEVM way of doing things. It's completely HTML5. If you see here, data dash role, and then I say what is the control I need, or the widget I need. Data dash role calendar, and one line of code, kendo bind that particular maybe document that body or whatever element that you want to go and then convert uh, that into a widget. So as soon as you call kendo.bind, it looks at the div, wherever the data dash role attribute is there, if it is a control of kendo, he's going to instantiate and then give it to you. Not only that, it's not just simple saying data dash role is equal to particular control, but I can actually go and then configure the complete configurational values through the data dash attributes. If you see here, data dash role, color palette, columns, title size, palette, change. I can even actually bind what should happen when a change of that particular control event is fired. So, and then, of course, you just call kendo.bind. So the bindings are included out of the box. It's not as if like you need to go and then figure out something to now to do an MEVM binding. Kendo UI core completely contains the MEVM stuff, whatever you need, like the binding expression. What you're seeing here is an HTML binding expression. I have said H1 data bind HTML title. Where's the title? The title is in the, uh, you know, the view model. The view model is an observable object. You make a change in the UI or you make a change in the object, it's going to do a two-way data binding. It works with widgets too. It's just not that you go and then bind an HTML expression. Rather, if you see here, I can say data dash role slider, data bind value of that slider is bound to an amount property in the observable object, the view model. So it works with anyway. It's a two-way data binding. So next question maybe this is fine. This is simple stuff. So what about data? How do you connect and uh, you know a particular web service or whatever data that you want and then bind it to the widget? So if you see here, this is what you're uh, used to do. Correct? You say dollar dot Ajax, and then you have a select ID products, then you append the options of the products once the success happens. Well, with Kendo UI data source, this is how simple it can get. If you see there, I have a data bind, put on the select. I say source is equal to products. What is a product? Product is actually a property in the view model. What is the type of the product? It's a Kendo UI data source. And look at the syntax. It's very, very, very minimal. I'm saying it has a transport object, and transport object supports read. For the read, I'm giving a URL, and I said you have to make a call using JSONP because you know you may be going cross domain. If you are within the same domain, you don't need to provide data type is equal to JSONP. And of course, it's a MVVM way of doing things. I'm saying data bind document dot body view model bind the view model to the body. It's going to go and then do that. So this is as simple as it can get with uh, kind of UI data source. That's my talk. No, wait. That's not the talk. The talk is more. This is what I'm here for. Right? Wait. So that's the various Angular integration. Nobody asked me, you know, it's all about Angular, right? Where is the Angular integration? Right? So we give Angular, Angular directives out of the box. I think now I got you back, everybody back now. So if you see there, div kendo dash window. I need a window widget. So all I do is kendo window, give it a name. Title for that window is calendar. And then all you need to do is just write a module and say, hey, I want kendo.directives dependency on my module. That's it. I mean, of course, I've let the controller empty because I'm not doing anything. But what you can do is you can pretty much go configure the uh, particular widget using your controller. If you see here, I want a date picker. So I said kendo-date-picker, right? And then I said, what are the options using which you have to create the date picker? That's coming through my controller property. If you see there, scope dot month picker config start depth format. These are some of the semantics of uh, particular uh, you know things about the Kendo date picker. So that's what I had for Kendo UI core crisp talk about 15 minutes. If you have any development tools, just come and talk to us in the Telerik booth. We'll try to find a solution for you, and then we'll also give you a T-shirt. So that's at the Telerik booth, and that's. The end for this talk. My name is Lohit. I have my Twitter handle as Kashyapa. I'm known as Kashyapa on the Twitter. If you want to know more about me, you can go to my short URL, about.me slash Kashyapa. Thank you.
Um, hey, so is there is there a particular reason why Kendo went in for an MVVM uh, approach instead of say a traditional MVC architecture? I think it's all opinionated uh, things. Basically, the community is moving towards MVVM. Uh, it's very hazy when somebody says MVC versus MVVM or you know MVC MVVM in JavaScript. But it's completely different when you go to your server-side technologies. The way you do MVC, the way you do MVVM in your server-side is completely different. But when it comes to kind of uh, the JavaScript world, it's closely overlapping. It's not that, that much difference. So what we did was when we started working on Kendo UI, it was two years back, and then MVVM was slowly picking up backbone. Uh, sorry, Knockout was pretty popular. So yeah, we said, OK, I think this is what the community wants to go. So let's be there. And then pretty much your Angulars, all those uh, have, are following the same thing. It's a two-way binding with MEVM, your controller. So those kind of stuff is what uh, we do. We, we have observable. So you put anything in the observable, it observes and will let you know the UI or anybody, what are the changes, two-way bindings coming in. I hope that answers the question. Hey, uh, my question is more about the Angular integration. Um, I think you know, right, the Angular itself it provides its own uh, UI, right, Angular UI. Right, so it has more widgets, and how, how, I mean, what is the? I mean, how about the integration of uh, the Kendo UI? Is it like uh, integrating the Angular UI itself, or is it a kind of a wrapper to our Angular, or how it different from the Angular UI? Kendo UI is a completely its own uh, widgets controls. Okay. So what we do is, as you saw, one of the code snippet that I had was JavaScript way of creating a Kendo UI uh, widget. It's okay. dot Kendo window. Okay. But when you're in the Angular world. That doesn't. That's not going to fly. So you mm -hmm. got to be with the Angular control. Angular has to go and then do the you know bindings and then lose the. So what we have done is we have created directives for our Kendo controls. Okay. So what you do is first you put jQuery, then you put Angular, then you put Kendo UI core, and then you put your uh, and, uh, the directives like Kendo dash um, whatever control you want. So the the control the ng the uh, Angular comes in, looks at the directives and says. Who is handling this? Kendo directives. OK, you got to do this. So we go and then instantiate okay. the uh, uh, widgets. So, so basically, you use the core Angular and not the Angular UI, right? So Yeah, no, it's not Angular UI. So what I'm trying to say is Kendo UI has 24 widgets. Okay. So what you can prettify your Angular. I'm not sure about the Angular giving you a UI. Angular is a framework. It doesn't have a UI. Uh, it has a UI uh, a project uh, built in. OK, now? OK, maybe. So what we have is much more advanced things than maybe the Angular UI. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Or OK, so if there's no more question, I'm available at the Telerik booth. As I said, come share your development rules. We'll try to give you a solution if we have, and then we'll give you a t-shirt. So thank you.